Greetings and welcome Toastmasters to Rise Up Club Officer Training for Presidents. My name is Tammy Wadle and I will be your presenter for today's workshop. I have been a member of Toastmasters since September of 2018 when my club chartered and in that time with I have served in various club officer roles, including that of president. And I've also had the incredible opportunity to serve on district committees as well as district leadership, most recently as the outgoing Palo Verde 3 area director and the assistant division director for Palo Verde. Today, we're gonna to talk about the club officer role of president. And I wanna first congratulate you on being elected as the president for your club. This is an incredible opportunity to set the tone for your club and provide supportive leadership. Your influence and example will bring out the best in members and club officers alike. Before we get started, I do want to mention a few housekeeping items. One, we did disable the chat with the exception of being able to chat with the moderator. This was to ensure that we were not having any distractions in the chat and to also ensure that we do capture all of the questions that you ask today so that we can include them in an FAQ when we post this to our YouTube channel as an additional resource for you. If for whatever reason your question does not get answered during today's session, please know that we're not ignoring you. We're just capturing it so that we can include it in, that, include it in the FAQ page. So let's jump in and let's get started. Today we're gonna to talk about the president's role and the responsibilities that you have as the president, as well as some resources that will be available to guide you. By the end of today, we're hoping that you have an understanding to be able to identify your role and the responsibilities to fulfill that role, as well as find the resources available to you. Now, I'm sure when you were elected president, there was a little bit of excitement, but there probably was a little bit of nerves there too. I remember when I was elected president and I was nervous, not knowing fully what that role entailed. And that's why we're here today, is to really provide you with a foundational understanding of what this role will entail, as well as the best way to execute on it. I do want to mention that everything that we're going to go over today is available in the Club Leadership Handbook. You can find that on Toastmasters.org, and we highly recommend that you download that and review that consistently throughout your term, as well as encourage your other club officers to do the same. So I wanna start by posing a question to all of you. And I wanna know what you think is the essence of the president's role. I'm gonna take a moment for you to capture what you think your thoughts would be. Now, this is just for yourself. You don't have to put it in chat at this time. But really, if I were to ask you, what do you think is the essence of a president's role? How would you answer that? All right, hopefully you captured something along the lines of the essence of a president's role to be the person who sets the tone for the club, also referred to as the club culture or the atmosphere of your club, and then also provide leadership to the remainder of the executive committee and club members. Now, how do we do that? That's what today's session is to do, is to help you learn how to do that more manageably as you go forward. So. I have another question that I'm gonna to pose to all of you as an activity. What are the responsibilities of a club president? So again, take a couple of moments to capture what you think would be the responsibilities. If you're new to Toastmasters or new to the president role and you're not sure, what do you think the role entails? What do you think your responsibilities will be? And we'll talk through those here in just a moment. Great, well hopefully you all captured the following key points. The responsibilities of the president are to preside over meetings, earn distinguished club recognition, lead and guide the club and the officers, and also to be a base camp manager and pathways. Your role as president as stated in the club constitution and standard bylaws of Toastmasters International is the club president is the chief executive officer of this club and is responsible for fulfilling the mission of the club. 
The president presides at meetings of this club and the executive committee, appoints all committees and committee members, and has general supervision of the operations of this club. The Constitution provides a definition, yet there are many responsibilities that make up the day-to-day -day activities of a president. And everything that you do in your role as president should ultimately support that club mission. Now, what is the club mission? We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Sounds like a lot, but we're going to teach you the tools and the tips and the tricks to understand exactly what that means. So as the president, you will preside over meetings and earn distinguished club recognition. You will also keep in mind that everything that you do as the president supports your club mission. So let's take a closer look at the responsibilities and the tools that you can use to fulfill your role. We've divided this into three areas, the club meeting, outside the club meeting, and with the executive committee. So we're gonna start talking and explore the club meeting responsibilities that you have. So we're gonna also chunk this into three components, and that is going to be before the club meeting, once the meeting has begun, and what you will do during the meeting, okay? The club meeting responsibilities are going to be for before the club meeting is to ask your VPE about special recognition or membership inductions. This is going to be very key because recognition is a very key component at Toastmasters and we want to make sure that we are encouraging our members to continue by recommend or recognizing the hard work that they've done throughout that time. So if they do have advancements, we want to call those out and provide that recognition for them. We also want to ask the VP of membership if there are any new members to be inducted. This will allow you to adjust your agenda, but also to be ready to actually administer the induction ceremony with the VPM as you proceed in your meeting. And then you also want to plan the business portion of the meeting. Are there updates from the district that you need to share or any other updates that will impact your club members. And then also, very important as well, is to review any necessary parliamentary procedures. This was a new one for me as well because I wasn't familiar with the parliamentary procedures until I went to conference my first year. And this will be key in the event that you do have members that want to vote or do anything that requires us to follow the parliamentary procedures. So understanding them is the big help as the club president as you go forward. Now, I just shared four key things for you to be focusing on before the club meeting begins. I'm going to ask you a little bit later in the meeting for a question and answer to do a knowledge check to ensure that you are paying attention to that. So if you didn't take any notes, here's your second opportunity to do so. Again, before the club meeting, ask your VPE if any members are to receive special recognition during the meeting. Ask your VPM if any new members are to be inducted at the meeting. Plan the business portion of your meeting and review any necessary parliamentary procedures. All right, let's move forward. Now, once the meeting begins or upon arrival, the club president is responsible for reviewing the meeting agenda to ensure that all roles have been filled, especially functionary and speaker roles. We also want the club president to greet all guests and members. Now, earlier I mentioned that these are the guidelines from Toastmasters International. We understand that some clubs have other executive committees do those, those functions, and that is okay. You absolutely, if you wanna delegate that role to a sergeant at arms or a vice president of education or membership, you absolutely can do that. It's just the recommendation again from Toastmasters and per the leadership guide book, it recommends that you as the president and the executive officer of the club to be the one to do those. Now, once the meeting gets going, again, we recommend from Toastmasters International that you call the meeting to order promptly at the scheduled time. That's a very key component of Toastmasters is to ensure that we're following our time guidelines. That's why we have a timer role. So we wanna make sure that we start that meeting on time. 
We also want to make sure that we introduce all guests. That's a great component of being a Toastmaster is to welcome new members or potential members. And so we want to make sure that we create a warm and inviting environment for them by welcoming them in. We also want to briefly explain the meeting's events for the benefits of the guests. I remember being a guest in my first club meeting and had no idea what was happening. So having a little bit of an, an understanding or explanation as the meeting goes, just help that new person understand why we're doing what we do. We also want to introduce the Toastmaster of the meeting, as well as conduct the business portion of the meeting. That's, again, where we will bring any district announcements or anything that is our responsibility as the club officer or president to ensure that our members are aware of. And then as we're getting ready to close, make sure that you give the date, time, and place of the next meeting if applicable. Understanding right now with COVID, most of us are still meeting online and or have done a hybrid approach, and that's okay too. But just remind them when your next club meeting will be if that be the case. Now, during the meeting, again, continue to make any announcements that are applicable. So this could be pertaining to just your club, but could be other announcements that you want to make that are district related. And then obviously, we start on time, we want to end on time. So you will also be the one to adjourn the meeting. Now, let's talk about outside of the club meeting. So in this particular instance, you will attend and vote at area and district council meetings. Those will be communicated to you via email, so please make sure that your updated email address is always on the Toastmasters website so that we have a means to inform you when those come up. We also want you to attend the annual business meeting at the International Convention to vote on behalf of the club. If you're not able to go, then we ask that you assign your club's proxy to a member of the district who will be attending the International Convention for your vote. Again, instructions on how to do all of those will be sent to you when that time comes. We also expect the club president to appoint the club's audit committee near the end of the term, as well as appoint the nominating committee to nominate new club officers before the beginning of the next term. In addition, outside of the club meeting, presidents will be receiving official correspondence from world headquarters. Examples of this could include the leader letter and copies of the club leadership handbook electronically for each incumbent club officer. We also encourage you to schedule and chair club executive committee meetings. This is a great opportunity to bring all of your club officers together to discuss updates, challenges, successes, anything that you want to call out. Plus, it's a great way to update them as to what's going on in the district if they're not aware. We also encourage you to develop and improve your club leadership. So club presidents must facilitate the development and achievement of club and member goals. So in order to do this, the president must ensure that club officers know what their responsibilities are and how to fulfill them. We also want you to search for leaders and ensure that all club officers are role are filled for the succeeding term and conduct timely elections. Which also means we expect that you are working throughout your term to look for your successor for your office. It works in your favor if you have an assistant or if you help to groom that person to come on as the incoming president when you need to step down. And then for club administration, the club president will ensure that the mechanisms of the club run smoothly. So this means attending to details and any managerial issues such as overseeing the administrative operations of the club in compliance with the club constitution and bylaws, and by scheduling and chairing those monthly executive committee meetings. And last, outside of the club meeting, we want you to advance club and member achievement. So the president will also focus a considerable amount of their attention on how to achieve and maintain quality for the club and its members. So to accomplish this, the president must see or must oversee the plan to achieve distinguished club program goals or DCP goals to ensure that the club earns distinguished or higher. We also want to ensure that the club has an ongoing membership building program. It's all about our members. We want to make sure we're building them up. We also want the president to encourage communication and leadership development by promoting all educational awards, regardless of what they happen to be. 
So all of your level ones, level twos, all the way to level five, as well as any DTMs or distinguished Toastmasters that are achieved in that year. As I mentioned before, recognition is a very key component and it helps to encourage members when you're calling out and recognizing the achievements that your members have done, especially considering the amount of time, dedication, prep and execution time that it took for them to complete those levels. And then also effective interaction, interactions with other organization levels. So the president and the executive committee are liaisons between your club members and the area, district, and international leadership. So two ways the president maintains a relationship with the district and world headquarters are by attending and voting the club's proxy at the district council meetings or authorizing a club member to do so. As we mentioned before, a lot of times communications go directly to the executive committee and not all members. So it is your responsibility as the president to ensure that you are helping to trickle those messages down to all members. Now, I have shared a great amount of information regarding the responsibilities of a club president. So I would like to pause here for just a couple moments to allow our moderator to review any questions that came up so that we can address them and or let you know that we'll get back to you as we go forward. So we'll pause and we'll come back here in just a moment. Great, thank you. All right, we're moving forward. Sounds like you guys are ready. <laughs> we're gonna talk about the executive committee. So now that we've looked at the club meeting responsibilities, we answered some of the questions that you brought up, let's take a look at what the executive committee responsibilities will be. So in this case, the club president will oversee the executive committee. And we also want to ensure that the executive committee has completed its duties. So this is to ensure that your members understand what their responsibilities will be as well. So one of those ways, obviously, is to ensure that they attend TLI just like you did, but also to have those monthly meetings to ensure that they understand their role, express any challenges that they may have with you so that you can assist them in achieving that. Now, in addition, the club executive as a whole has the following responsibilities. And as the executive officer of the committee, these will also fall under your area of, of responsibility as well. So one of them is to create a club budget. Now, again, not all clubs have a club budget beyond just the standard dues. If you don't, that's OK. But if you do, you want to create that club budget. And you also want to share that with members as to how those funds are being allocated. We also encourage you to complete a club success plan. This is something that is asked for every year by the district. So if it's not something that you have been in the habit of doing, we highly recommend it. Plus, it helps to establish the goals. and that you have for the year, which ultimately allows you to strategize the success on how you plan to accomplish the club, the Distinguished Club Program or DCP. And it helps you to create and oversee other club committees as necessary. So for example, I know some clubs have committees when it comes time for open house. That could be one example in that particular instance. So now that we looked at your responsibilities in and out of the club, as well as your executive committee, let's explore the specifics. Again, earlier I said you might be asking yourself, I understand the responsibilities and what I need to do with the executive committee, but wow, how am I going to fulfill all of that? So how, when am I supposed to do this? Who can I rely on or what should I do? So we're going to talk through a recommendation on how to do that. So again, I'm going to pause here for just a moment to see if you have any thoughts as to how, when, who, and what. We'll give you just about 30 seconds or so to capture a couple quick bullet points. All right, great. Let's talk through how you would be able to do that. Now, one of the areas that we recommend is to do a president responsibility action plan. This helps you to answer those questions that we posed earlier. So the how, consider asking how you will fulfill this responsibility. So what specific actions will you need to complete to ensure success for you, your club officers, and your club members? When will each action be completed? This is your opportunity to schedule time, put it on your calendar if you need to, to dedicate time to be able to do those options. This is when you can also determine when you plan on having your executive club meetings. 
to ensure that you have those on the books, that they're scheduled, and that your executive committee knows when you'll be meeting. Who is available to you? This is a huge district, and we have great opportunities to learn from each other. Throughout the various years, we've had great programs that allow you to go and encourage you, actually, to visit other clubs to gather best practices or tips and tricks. What works for them? What is their club culture? And we would recommend the same thing again this year. Spend some time with your fellow peers out there and learn some of their tips and tricks that could possibly help your club, as well as reaching out to previous presidents. In your club, you have an outgoing immediate past president. Ask them for their thoughts and guidance, and they should be offering that support to you anyway through the transition. But there is a lot of help available to you. So please don't feel like you are in this alone. The district has great resources available. We'll talk about a few of those a little bit later as well. But in addition to the Toastmasters website, there is a district website that we'll reference as well. And then what materials and resources can you use? I made mention to you earlier that there will be websites. So again, toastmasters.org, aztoastmasters.org, and then any additional resources, tips and tricks, training seminars, anything that we do throughout this Toastmaster year will be made available to you as the president to help you in your term. So let's debrief the president's responsibilities. So you have the responsibility related to the club meeting and the club executive committee. So all of your resp responsibilities will ultimately help you to achieve your club goals. So let's take a look at the resources that will also be there to help you. So there are several. First is a checklist to get you started. So in this instance, we want you to attend district sponsored club officer training or TLI, which is what you're in right now. So make sure that you make it a point to attend both, right? This session this for this particular part of the year, as well as our fall training that we'll be doing as well, okay? Read the club leadership handbook if you haven't already. And even if you have, it's a great reminder to just go back, refresh, and ensure that you have all of the components down. And the Distinguished Club Program, or DCP, and the Club Success Plan. Again, these help you to determine the goals that your club wants to achieve and execute the plan to actually achieve them. I know a lot of clubs are very competitive, and they want to earn that distinguished or that select distinguished or even president's distinguished. And the Club Success Plan really is key in helping you accomplish that. Meet with the outgoing executive committee to transfer any necessary information. This is key, especially if you have websites or anything that requires passwords, your bank account for those of you that do have checking accounts with your club. It's a key that you have the proper paperwork to transition, all of that, so that we want to make sure that the executive committee is ready to go and to provide that information so there's no hiccups with the incoming group. Meet with the outgoing president to transfer any necessary files or information. Again, that person is the immediate past president and your best resource to help guide you along the way. So you're not in this alone and you're not flying blind. So reach out to that person and ask for their guidance, ask them to take you under their wing as they go forward and just be there as that additional resource. And then again, meet with your current executive committee and develop the club success plan and your budget for the year. Now, there are additional club resources or additional resources as club president available for you, and you'll see them listed here. We will be sharing this information with you later. You can also find this exact presentation available on Toastmasters.org. So if you did need to capture that, you're more than welcome to. But we'll also include these into the FAQ portion when we publish this to the YouTube channel. Okay, one additional resource that I do want to make mention that isn't listed on this slide is our District 3 website, and it's a great resource for you as well. So that is www.aztoastmasters.org. There's a great amount of information in regards to coming up to upcoming activities, district events, when those district committee and council meetings were that we mentioned earlier, or any trainings or other opportunities that are available to not only you as the president, but your club members as well. So make sure that you stay consistent on the AZ Toastmasters website. And we also do have social media channels that are out there. So if you weren't aware, if it's a social media platform, we're there. 
So make sure you're checking us out on YouTube. There's a District 3 Facebook page. There's a District 3 Instagram. So we are out there, and I'm sure I'm leaving some of them out. Go and check out all of our different social media outlets and make sure you're engaging there as well. It's a great way that you can meet other members of other clubs too. Now, we went through a lot of information again here. So I want to pause to, again, allow our moderator to review any questions that might have come up in the chat while we were presenting those details. And we'll be back together just in a second. All right. Excellent. We are about ready to conclude. So thank you guys for sticking with me this entire time. Now, I mentioned before that there were going to be some knowledge check questions that we were going to ask before we concluded today's meeting. And so it's time for me to do that. So earlier I said that I was going to ask you about the responsibilities before the club meetings. If you guys remember, I asked you to take some notes because I'd be asking these questions again. So hopefully you have those ready. So I mentioned that there were four key components to prepare ahead of your club meeting. And so one of them was to ask your VPE if any members were to receive special recognition at the meeting, to ask your VPM if there were any new members to be inducted, and to review necessary parliamentary procedures. What was the fourth thing that I mentioned? So I'm going to give everybody just a moment to put their answers in the chat. And our moderator will be reviewing those and we'll continue in just a moment. Great job team, you got it, right? Plan the business portion of the meeting. Excellent, you were paying attention, I'm proud of you. All right, next question, develop and improve the club leadership. So I mentioned that club presidents must facilitate the development and achievement of the club and member goals. To do this, the president must ensure club officers know what their responsibilities are and how to fulfill them, search for leaders to ensure that all club offices are filled, and do the club administration piece. But again, there was a fourth component that is crucial for you specifically as you're getting ready to vacate your office. What was that fourth thing that I mentioned? Great job. Prepare for your successor, absolutely. All right, last question. The President Responsibility Action Plan. This is, I will give you the hint. This is where I mentioned the how, the when, the who, and the what. What were the questions that I posed for each of those? Again, I'm gonna give you some time to do that. So what was the question for the how, the when, the who, and the what? All right, let's recap. So let's see if your answers were right. So the how is how will you fulfill this responsibility? The when is when will each action be completed? Who is who is responsible to help you or available to help you, excuse me. And what is what materials and resources can you use? All right, you obviously all paid attention today. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I sincerely appreciate it. We are at the end of our session together. So again, thank you so much for being here, for attending this training. Let's recap everything that we talked about today. So club presidents open and preside over all club and club executive meetings. The president sets the tone for the entire club through preparation, conducting well-run meetings, and providing leadership whenever required. They work closely with the executive committee and the president strategizes and communicates with club officers to achieve distinguished club status. The entire executive committee shares responsibilities to deliver a positive member experience, achieve goals, drive membership growth, and look for future leaders. Connect with leaders in other clubs to gain knowledge. The club president can impact individuals, the entire club, the community and beyond. And leadership experience and opportunity awaits you. So we hope that you have an incredible term ahead as you move into this year. At this time, if I will mention again, if there are any further questions, feel free to put those into the chat for the moderator. We will be capturing any and all questions 
to include into our FAQ or frequently asked questions, again, to post on our YouTube and as an available resource for you should you want to refer back to this. If you go back and after some time, you start to think about a couple of questions that we may not have addressed in this, that's a great opportunity for you to reach out to our TLI group, and we can include those in the FAQs. So that is TLI at aztoastmasters.org. If you email them, you should be ready to go as we go forward. So again, thank you all so much for attending this session today. We greatly appreciate it. We are actually going to post the evaluation for today's session. So if you could go ahead and fill that out before you leave, I would greatly appreciate it. Again, I am Tammy Wadle, and it was my pleasure to be working with you all today. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday or Friday night. Thank you all so very much for attending, and I hope to see you in the future.